What's up? My name's Harmony Guido, and welcome to a new series I'm calling Reading the Manual! If you hate reading, then this video is for you. So what is this new segment, you may ask? Well, it's where I basically take you through the Ableton Live Manual! Yes, I won't be doing that through the whole time I read, but I will say that I get a lot of questions about Ableton Live, and I thought it would be cool just to get you a glass of wine or a surge or whatever if you're over 21 and you can drink or if you can just sit back and relax by my lovely fire in the background and I will take the time out of my day and read you the manual of Ableton Live. Now you ask, does he really love Ableton Live? Yes, I really love Ableton Live. Yes, the logo of Ableton Live is on my back bicep so check it out or tricep or whatever it's called. What up yo? Two one two. Actually 205, baby, but what? I'm gonna just skip chapter one because it's all about what's new in Ableton Live 10 and I'm just gonna go back to that one. So right now we're just going to jump right into chapter two, the first steps. This episode of Reading from the Manual is sponsored by Not Reading Rainbow. So anyways, let's jump right in to chapter two, 2.1. And as you can see, you can follow along. I'm gonna have the link down below for you if you'd like to follow along or see what I'm doing. It's right off the Ableton Live website. All right, so let's just dive right in. Chapter two, first steps. And you can see I skipped the welcome to because I just wanted to get into the nitty gritty. 2.1, learn about live. Live comes with a set of interactive lessons uh, to take you step by step through the key features of the program. The lessons are organized in a table of content which can be opened directly in the program via the help menu. We highly recommend following the lessons. Have I ever done the lessons? No, because I've just been on YouTube every time I've ever looked for something. So you may want to follow the lessons. It may be uh, very helpful. We highly, they say they highly recommend it, so you may want to do it. Many users have told us that these lessons have helped them become familiar with the program quickly. Have I ever done the lessons? No, I probably should have, but I didn't listen. Um, but yes, I think they are very useful, but I've never done them. All right, so let's keep going on with chapter two. We also recommend that you leave live concepts chapter. See chapter four, which encapsulates everything that live is and can do, and therefore uh, a worthwhile read for beginners and experienced users. The remaining chapters of this manual serve as an in-depth reference uh, for the material introduced in live concepts. Okay, so let's just get right into the first thing, which is called 2.1.1 using the info view and index. And I'm gonna flip through between Ableton Live and the manual so we can get hands-on experience because I think that will be vital in this. Using the info view and index. Live's info view tells you the name and function of whatever you place your mouse over. For certain items, you can create your own text and it will appear in the window. Okay, so it says that it looks like it's in the bottom Let's just go into Ableton Live and shabam. Sometimes it can be hidden with this little arrow. I will say that. But right down here is the info view. It talks about, oh, what is this? And I guess you can rename it. But like, for instance, like the features like uh, tempo, metronome, quantize. It'll even go through all this stuff. If you look, at, I'm highlighting my, highlighting the cursor over anything and it will display different things. Look, it even does the groove, the user folders, specific folders, and I think, no, it doesn't do it when you have the preferences window open, but you can see that it's very helpful. I mean, anything you put your cursor over, it's going to give you what's going on. So yeah, I use that a lot. And I've been using Ableton Live for almost, what, seven years, eight years? And I still use that because I forget stuff. If you require more information on a specific user interface element or topic, please consult the reference manual. The index found in, at the end of the manual contains the names of all user interface elements and will lead you to the relevant section. Okay, that's 2.1. 2.2, setting up preferences. Now I use 
the preferences like a ton. So I think this will be very useful. Live's preferences window is where you can find various settings that determine how Live looks, behaves, and interfaces with the outside world. The window is accessed from the preferences command, which in Windows is available in the options menu, and in OS X it's available in the live menu. Preferences can be accessed with the control comma in the PC or command comma uh, Mac shortcut. So I use this all the time. So let's just go over to Ableton Live. First off, file. Well, you click lot. No, you don't click file. You go to live and then you click preferences. But I always just use command comma because it's so much faster. And here you, it's talking about how literally you, you can change here's all the MIDI stuff of all these different synthesizers and you can go dive deeper into the latency which I've done videos on and we'll get into that in that chapter then you can go into different things like look and feel you can zoom in make everything look giant make everything look super small if you want everything to look super small like like so I just keep it at a hundred I don't know what that is. Pin tablet mode, that looks new. Uh, let's see, then you can change the theme. I like dark. You can change the light. Mid light. Mid dark. I like dark. Well, I used to be a light guy, but then I changed it. I like, currently I'm in a dark mood, so I, I went with the dark. Anyways, command comma or control comma if you're on a Windows. I will typically tell you Mac stuff because I use Mac. Okay, live preferences are uh, distributed over several different tabs. Like I was saying, you can do all that different thing. I basically just told you that. In the look and feel tab, you can modify various settings including the language used for text display, the color theme, uh, the color scheme or theme uh, for the live user interface, uh, this will also be where you can adjust the size of different objects in the zoom. I showed you that. You can go from 50 to 200. All right, so that is the look and feel tab, and I showed you a lot of that, a lot of those settings. I set it to English, but here are the other languages that you can do. Okay. Audio preferences. Let's see, let's go to the audio preferences right here. This is where you can select your audio interface. Audio preferences are used to set up Live's audio connections with the outside world via an audio interface. For instance, like the Universal Audio Apollo, I have two of them and they're linked together and they have all these different synthesizers connected to them. Please take some time to follow the program's built-in settings uh, built in setting up I.O. lesson which will talk you through these steps required to set up and optimize the settings of any given system. To access this lesson use the help view command uh, from the help menu. Okay, If you want to get that lesson help view command recording right there, there it is. Click on that sucker and I think you just go to next page blah 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 and then you can go back to home. Yeah, I have used this sometimes. The link MIDI preferences are used to help Live recognize external devices like synthesizers for three separate distinct purposes. Purposes. Number one, playing MIDI notes. To learn how to route an external device into Ableton Live uh, for MIDI input or see how MIDI to an external device, please see the routing and IO chapter 14 and we will go through that so if you want to just go to my video chapter 14 just go to that controlling part uh, number two controlling parts uh, of an interface remotely this subject is covered in detail in the MIDI and key remote control chapter chapter 27 and number three syncing the program with external devices uh, either via Ableton Link or via MIDI. Uh, please see the synchronization and rewire chapter 30 for details. Okay. So, command comma, MIDI. So it's talking about 
the inputs and the outputs and then track sync remote and actually if you look down here it actually does tell you what these things do so I, I, I forget all the time what these things do um, so a lot of the times I'll be like what does track do again what does sync do again and listen I've been doing this for a long time and you still forget it's okay you will learn okay we'll go to the next tab file and folder I use this a lot it's very important to set up a default set and you can arrange your set exactly how you like it I have spent hours and hours and hours setting mine up and then you can click save and every time you open Ableton Live BAM it'll be exactly how you set it up and you're ready to make music ready to go alright it says the file folder preferences pertain to Live's file management and the location of plug-in devices chapter 17 all right, then the library preferences, let's see, this is where you like to save your user library folders, packs. This is just like where you want your stuff on your computer, basically. And yes, it allows you to select a specific location for various installed files. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. The record warp launch preference. This is pretty important it tells you basically what you're going to record in 24-bit uh, the looping you can have uh, advanced looping settings it does tell you down here I'm not going to go into all that in detail right now um, but you can go through and read this on your own if you have a fancy launch is basically when you launch clips how you like to launch it globally and all that jazz and then whether it's going to play on the tempo, go right to the next scene, da 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 da. You can also read that in the info menu by yourself. Let's see here. Then the license maintenance preferences are um, tab. It says are used to manage the licensing and installation of the live platform. Okay, so this is where you can authorize from Ableton Live when you buy your copy of Ableton Live. As you can see, I have automatic updates. I think that's important. Always make sure you update your computer and Ableton Live because they always are working off the latest and greatest in Windows and Mac and all that jazz. So, Okay, 2.3, the main live screen. Most of your work in live happens in the main live screen. This screen consists of a number of views and each view manages a specific aspect of your live set which is the type of document that you can create and work on in live. If you have multiple monitors or even a very large monitor you can set up a second window to display all of live's views at the same time. So live has basically two different views you can flip between like this view is what I use a lot to uh, work in uh, for when I'm like recording and then this view is what I do a lot to work in like live performance as you can see I have some kind of live performance stuff set up already I can push this out of the way and get this out of the way and it'll expand so you can see it does tab I'm using the uh, tab to switch between the different things uh, the different views each one of the selector buttons at the screen borders calls up specific views. Clicking on one of those, for instance, opens up, opens and closes Live's browser. So it's talking about these little things. Bam, bam. In the four corners. In the four corners. Well, actually, not four corners. Well, yeah, kind of. Because here is where you could also click to switch the views. And then down here, you can, like, get rid of stuff. So... Yeah, that's basically what it's talking about. The browser selector is what it says. You can run live in a full screen mode by uh, selecting the full screen command from the view menu. Uh, the full screen mode can also be toggled by pressing F11 on a PC or Control Command F on a Mac. All right. Control Command F. And then there we go, full screen, control command F, it takes you back out of it. So it just basically toggles. Oh, to turn off full screen mode, you can also press this little thing down here. Let's see if it works on a Mac, control command F. There's something down here. 
I don't see anything. What is that? No, I don't see it. Maybe that's just on Windows. <laughs> Turn off full screen Windows and OS X or older. Hmm. Full screen. Well, I can't seem to get that to work. I'm just going to use the shortcut command. When using OS X or higher, Live uses the operating system's native full screen controls to turn full screen on. Oh, there you go. Just answered our question. This little ditty right here. Full screen, that pops down, takes you out of full screen. Ta-da! Reading makes you smarter. So yeah, we just did that. We just did that, bro. Okay. Enabling a second window control in Windows, uh, con uh, Control Shift W or Command Shift W in a Mac will we'll create like two different windows. All right, let's see. Control Command Command Shift W. Hey, look at that! I only have one computer screen, so I don't want to see that. So we'll see. It still works. That's pretty cool. If you have two screens, I used to have two screens, but I tend to just use one at a time, but whatever floats your boat, bro, or gal. All right. If Live's browser is open, you can adjust the main window's horizontal split by dragging. Now, I do use this a lot, so this is talking about if this is open, you can drag like this and like this to get your things like so or I think too sometimes I don't think it, it works on that but I think uh, you can definitely do it like this too and then sometimes these things you just gotta look for that little that little ditty right there Okay, that takes care of that. All right, that is chapter two of Reading the Manual with Harmageddon. So, in my next video, we will cover Authorizing Live in chapter three. Uh, click on the playlist that I've created or uh, subscribe to see more videos or, you know, whatever, man. Go make some music. Anyways, my name's Harmageddon. I'll see you next time. Peace.